This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Warning Internet Surfers. Comedians are online and their LOL triggers today on the show. We've got two certified card-carrying comedians, Jason Stewart and Jill Michelle Melian. Yeah, I got it. No, Melian. <laughs> Melian. Oh, man, I was so close. Well, and I was going to say, I know of what I speak, but I apparently I don't excuse. because I'm I went comedian to Jamie Alcroft here with comedian Lori Rogenkamp and a woman who dated two comedians and then wisely married a lawyer, Louise Palenka. We see. Thank you, Jamie. That was melodious, and you are correct <laughs> and astute. Our guests are comedians. Jason Stewart. Yes. Can we click on his website? He has one. Oh, wow. He's, he's in the dot com. Oh, my business. God. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, ominous. A little menacing. Very but ominous. also, I'm drawn to it. Very Not God-like. menacing. It's supposed to be sexy and sort of okay. just... Okay, uh, yeah. It's artistic. Okay. Checking all those boxes. It is. It's, it's, it's probing. <laughs> and it ar- artistic. And it is. Mm-hmm. It's, very, artistic. it's very religious, very God-like. Oh, yeah, you could yeah. start Well, thank you. Yeah. You definitely start Thank you, Terry. You You're welcome. Charismatic cult leader. And your new series, I mean, Smothered. <laughs> and then is we have Jill Michelle, Jill Michelle Melian. Well, thank you. she has a dot com. Yeah. There she yeah. is. Hi. Let's see there how it looks. Go. Oh. oh. The white mm. Latina. There. Yes. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, it is free for you all. Oh. So I should have had my yeah. book you on like, the first page like you. Y'all. Yeah. Oh, so we're Y'all. here to learn. But we are here to learn from one another. So we're going to start out. Let us begin with Jason Stewart. Jason was a gay Jewish boy who fell in love with Omar Sharif and dreamed of growing up to become Barbara Streisand. Jason has appeared in over 200 films and TV shows. He came out to Geraldo on national television in 1993. Uh, the gay liberal Jewish actor proved his range by playing a straight white Christian slave owner in Birth of a Nation. Yeah. As a comedian, Jason has headlined at all the major comedy clubs, appearing twice at the prestigious Just for Laughs Comedy Festival. He performed stand-up on Broadway with Joan Rivers and Sandra Bernhardt. He was featured in Comedy Central's groundbreaking special, Out There, and on his own stand-up comedy special, Making It to the Middle. Jason has acted with, okay, strap in for this. It's it's a lengthy list of impressive mm-hmm. actors who associate with R. Jason. George Clooney, Faye Dunaway, Angelina Jolie, Angela Lansbury, John Lithgow, Laurie Metcalf, Alexander Paul, Keanu Reeves, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Marissa Tomei, John Voight, Damon Wayans, and they are all heavily discussed in his very dishy book, Shut Up, I'm Talking. Yeah, you got to say it right. Ooh. Shut up, I'm talking. Shut <laughs> up, I'm talking. My mother, right. my mother gave me the uh, name of the book. I said, Mom, yeah. I want to call the book, book I'm Not Barbara Streisand, but the publisher, CCB Publishing, wouldn't let me do it. They said she has a book coming next year. It's going to be, she could sue us. It's uh, uh-huh. uh, that people will think it's just about her. And I said, Ma, what do you think? She says, shut up, I'm talking. Let me fit. And I, <laughs> was it? Perfect. And that's Thank the name. you. <laughs> well, there, there's your book. Oh. And so what? we're wondering if you can share a dishy story with us, Jason. Oh, God. Uh, from the book, I, yeah. I guess the first really interesting thing is people th- th- asked, how did I get my name? Because my real name is not Jason Stewart. When I was uh, 19 years old, I went to Schwab's. I used to go to Schwab's all the time because that's that where you that hung out. To get discovered. Oh, that's right. And get discovered, discovered right? And, and yeah. it, was like a, it was like a European seating, so anybody would sit anywhere they wanted, and it was so busy, so you'd have to sit in. So I'm manipulating it so I could sit by two-time Academy Award winner, Shelley Winters. Mm. And she was there with Sally Kirkland, who will be at my book signing this uh, oh, cool. Friday at Book Soup, Great. August 2nd at 7 p.m. Well, plug Hollywood. that if you want um, to. Now, no, go is, ahead. Is and she was like a, 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 like a... Ooh, it was, a, it was she, I'll explain to Lori because yeah. she's yes. so young. She's very It was young. a drugstore and a coffee shop together. Tell her and what that, a drugstore was. Now, <laughs> she, see, that has a different you know connotation you mean nowadays, the too. The like CVS. Yeah, it wasn't a dispensary. I know what a drugstore is. It's where you go get ice cream. That's what a drugstore is. Of course. There you go. But in those days, they'd have them together and you could go get some makeup if you wanted because I can tell you there's a lot of Makeup yes, and, a seltzer. Or, and a seltzer. And, 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 and have a sandwich and hang out. Yeah. And actors would go to Schwab. So I'm sitting at the table with two time Academy Awards Shelley winners. I'm sitting there with uh, uh, Sally Kirkland, which was very young and in her 20s. And she's eating a piece of cheese. And Skippy Lowe, who had had a public access show called Skippy Lowe Talks to Hollywood. And he looked like a lesbian. And I didn't know. I thought it was a woman. I didn't even know. And I'm sitting there like 10 minutes. And finally, Shelley Winters turns around. And she goes, So who are you? <laughs> and I said, My name's Stuart Greif. And she said, what? I said, Stuart Ted Greif, that was my name. And she said, well, that's a stupid name for a cute kid. 
<laughs> Fast forward three months later, I got my first guest starring role on a TV series called Life and Times of Eddie Roberts. I played a ping pong player who was smoking pot. I had four scenes. I thought this was it. In the credits, they spelled my name Stuart Grief. The next day, I changed my name to Jason Stewart. Oh, really? Wonderful. Wonderful wow. student, smart, good move. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. That's funny that that Sh- Shirley Winter said that because Shelly, Sh- Shelly. 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 but her real name is Shirley Shrift. 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 Yes. Yeah. Oh my oh. God, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Lori, bring yeah. it. Everybody well, changed their names in those days. Yeah. Yeah, because they kept misspelling it. Yeah, and I I didn't want to be a grief. I mean, and, and of course I thought, oh, I'll just keep the same spelling as my last name. So from forever, for my entire life, I'm going, it's Jason Stewart, S-T-U-A-R-T. And if you don't say that to Alexa on the thing, she doesn't, she thinks I'm a football player. Mm. <laughs> she does. <laughs> and she treats you differently because you're a football player. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So, All right, not, we're going to yeah. click on Jason's IMDb because it's very expansive and impressive. Oh, wow. Yes. So there you are. Scroll down so we can see all the things that he's been on. And I and I just want to ask you and, been, and known for as we're scroll oh known for Birth of a Nation that was fantastic oh really speak great to what in you're that. known for Jason really I think Birth of a Nation now is something I'm really known for well now I, it's not like when we were kids and you I, would do something and you'd be identified with it like I used to be on my wife and kids I played the shrink in the early 2000s and if if that had happened in the 70s I would have been a major star. But, you know, at that time, there were, you know, a lot of television stations, and now there's a million. I mean, people know me from guest starring recently on uh, Love for Judd Apatow. Uh, people know me from my stand-up. People know me from all the independent films. I've had five at Sundance. Uh, people great. know me from, I mean, I was at Outfest this week, a big popular film festival. I had a film in it, and somebody said, oh, I saw you in this thing. You were a doctor. I said, okay, a little more specific. And people, you know, people will look at you, and they'll go, tell me what you've been on. I said, well, just tell me what you've watched. <laughs> <laughs> it's a standoff. There is no you what, is, what yeah. are you known for. You know, Tangerine to the independent film people is just like if you're selling an independent film, if you're selling a, a horror film. I was in the remake of the of the Pit and the Pendulum, and I get tons of stuff from that because they're people that obsess with horror films. And you used yeah. to be able to know that. Oh, well, if something reran last night, they're probably talking about that. But now you have no idea what people are streaming. Oh, yeah. I, when, when I was on, this is 1986. The first time I was ever on a talk show as a guest was the Merv Griffin show, and I was wow. driving in the valley Ooh. going to an exercise class, and somebody almost took my oh. saw me at the thing, and they. They go, oh my God, you were on Merv Griffin last night. And they almost took their car and hit me by accident. <sighs> and I, you know, thank God there wasn't someone in the other lane. But that's oh. the way it used to be. When I was on Star yeah. Search in those days, people, everybody knew what you were on. Mm-hmm. And now as the years have gone on, you know. We can tell what you're on right you're, now. There's g- groups of people <laughs> yeah, uh, that like you. We were just, right. J- Jilly and I were just talking about that in the car. It's like niche famous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was in I was in a, a Starbucks the other day, and I swear to God, I had I heard this exact song conversation where somebody was talking about Idris Elba, and they were like, "Yeah, Idris Elba, I really like his work in The Wire." And this other person goes, "Wait, Idris Elba's an actor? I thought he was just a DJ." Literally, that was the conversation. He was on The View today. Yeah. He had done it just as a a, a riff for yeah, fun. Yeah. And all of a sudden now he's a, uh, yeah. He's a DJ. I was like, DJ. how does all, all well, people it's the only same, know him as a DJ? It's the same. I mean, when I, there are certain people that don't know I'm a comedian. And yeah. there are certain people that still don't know that I, that I can do drama. Yeah. And I've done drama and that I'm not a one-trick pony and that I can pl- my I can disappear into a role and become somebody depth. else. It's called depth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's called yeah. what? Depth, depth and you have depth. it, Jason. Oh, thank you. Uh, Jill Michelle Melian is a white Latina. Ha. Look at her. Mm. Born and raised <laughs> in Miami, Florida. Uh, she was born to an Irish mother and a South American father. She yes. was the first and only Latina cast member for Fox Mad TV, recurring on Comedy Central's Reno 911, and she's a national touring stand-up mm. comedian. It, it's hard to read this font that you have on your website. Um, her roots are dramatic it's acting, fault. but it's very fault. girly and pretty. It really is fault. beautiful. Mm-hmm. Not my fault. It's like calligraphy. <laughs> uh, but she quickly learned her gift of comedy, uh, timing, aka. But I didn't when I read that just now. Notice, <laughs> aka. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're like me in the intro. <laughs> aka Jilly wrote, produced, and starred in the indie film This Is Meg, based on her yes. true life events. Here is yes. Jilly's stand up special available in iTunes. So where else can people get it, Jilly? Oh my gosh, it's all over. If you have Spectrum if you have on demand um, there's like a list on my website but if you're Amazon if you're an Amazon Prime member it's free for Prime members so you can watch it there too so and it's a full hour and you're on your couch 
You can go to the bathroom and push pause if you need to. So it's wonderful. And she's audience. beautiful and funny. Uh, beautiful and, and funny. Of course, okay. yeah. So here's right. what I want to know, Jilly. So uh-huh. the internet makes it possible for people to create programming and put it out there for everyone to enjoy. What was the process for you to make your own stand-up special and have it available for people? Um, it, it was it was time. You know, I had done. Um, yeah, Jason, will hold it. Um, there's like no little prop up. We need little prop ups. You know, for I have one. Right. I would have brought you one. <laughs> um, but we, you know. It's, I had specials, like little specials on, um, you know, Showtime and Hulu and things like that. Um, my fans won't want to see your face, Jason. Oh. <laughs> Mine will. Mine will. This a is lot what of straight, comics can do. We've known each other for guys, so right? long. We've known each other for Give so long. Give me the phone, Jason. Um, but um, yeah, we, uh, it got to a point where it was, I had been doing, you know, headlining um, for about about six years and I've been doing comedy for over 15. And when you have those little specials, everyone's asking for your one hour. And I had just done a film called This Is Meg that I independently produced and wrote. And because of that, I was piggybacking. I had all that, like, that, that energy behind it. And I was like, you know what? I had the crew still. And I was like, hey, guys, let's go. So I called my home club that I love so much, the improv, the Hollywood improv. And I said, I want to do it here because that's where I, like, started in Los Angeles. And I want it to be very intimate because Sarah Silverman's last special, the one that she won um, the Emmy for at Largo, really inspired me. Because I said, it's not about the bells and whistles. It's about the material. And I am It's so also ready. what we do is what we were talking about in the car. We yeah. came over together. We, you're in the comedy club. And that's the experience that they have. You're not in a theater. It's not artificial. Mm-hmm. Right. And her mm-hmm. special, I've seen it. It's just laugh out loud oh, funny. Thank you. Yeah, I just really... It was nice to dump and I and, and dump not in a negative connotation and like mm-hmm. it is to get that material out because with time you know we all grow as comics and our POV changes and we have mm-hmm. more to say right. so and I know those jokes are solid so I was like here let me put it it's in the can now like everybody can watch it if they want to and then now I can start writing new and fresh yeah. things mm-hmm. there's some closure it feels, yeah. yeah it felt like closure yeah. it felt like a chapter but now it's like the next chapter okay. now yeah. Oh, that's a good way to look at it. That's yeah. great. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, now special you, to special. Jilly and Jason special. have built uh, their careers around stand-up comedy and acting, but you, Jilly, are also transitioning into writing and producing indie films. Yes. And I you can't know you say wanna... transition anymore because that means that you lose a penis. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Or that you're dying. Oh, or, or, you or, gain or you gain a one. <laughs> or you, or get, you yeah. gain one, yeah. yeah. That doesn't Where's happen as much. Um, yeah, I've, I've transitioned um, just because... Uh, you know that our the whole business has changed and we were talking about that too all the platforms that are available now and it's used to be a small uh a short list of us that were always called in for the the shows to you know be working constantly and um and it it's no more there's so many casting directors mm-hmm. there it's impossible to know them all so um, so there's the the good and the bad, and then I chose to focus on the good. And what the good is is that we're able to do things independently now because we're not shooting on film anymore. So it's not costing as much. It's still expensive, of and course. Play a part but, that you that mm-hmm. it's more rounded, and it's not just the the wife or the girlfriend coming in. You get to actually play a part that has depth and is funny and, and a lot of times yeah. for women and especially in the comedies they don't have as much unless you're doing your own thing exactly and as far as being a female producer it's my way of getting into that producing world and being really proactive and showing this is what i can do for x amount of dollars and look how good i can do it for mm-hmm. so here's give me the next opportunity and that's what's happened so after this is meg um carlos alice rocky and i that i was on reno 911 with him i played his sister and we toured together for almost four years. Well, that must um, have been fun. Oh, He's my God. Great. Oh, my yeah. so God. You talk about He's dishing. Amazing. Four yes. years. I mean, if you, you can do that with someone for four years, you oh, can make a movie like, with him. He's my brother. He's my brother. Yeah. You know, he's I. A great guy. He's just an amazing human being. And we're very similar energies. Um, so we we know how to talk to each other without, like, going, oh, God, that's so mean. You know, we're not those people. So, um, so yeah, we. we teamed up we've been wanting to do a horror film for a really long time we're funny people so we knew it was going to be a comedy horror we just knew it and we had been talking about it for oh my gosh i don't even know years well you did and, that other thing where you played the, the the dead people 
those the videos where you were all playing the dead people. Oh, but he wasn't involved in that. But I mean, you did those, so yeah. you you understood that market because that was comedy and dead people, which is sort of it's a little different. It was, but it's, it was horror to me. It was, it, but it's different. This is this is more. This is very horror. Were this they is, zombies? This is um yes. This is the okay. uh, zombies are funnier. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think they. You are. can get a you can get a great laugh with a zombie. Well, those, you those can't little, get especially the aggressive ones. He's yeah. talking about. It you have was, to be a little more than dead. Yeah. yeah. So you really under, but you do understand that market i think yes this is different this is more like Shaun of the dead uh, yeah it's more in that direction yeah. so it's a little bit more it's a little bit more intellectual like the humor um and we kept everything pretty grounded and um but yet we're still we're all funny people the cast is aaron hayes rob belushi Jeez. uh you know uh brett ernst um wow. uh who else do we got in there oh we've got maurice lamarche uh we've oh. got uh tara strong I mean, it just it, really? it, the cast is just incredible, That's and could, we got everybody we wanted. So, which what was happens in it, Jilly? Mm -hmm. um, How is it funny, scary? What do they do? <laughs> I, I always say I, I, after we because we just locked picture, and now we're going into to post for color correction and, and sound. And I say the best way to describe this film, you guys will love this. It's like if John Hughes made a horror film. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> There's heart. It's funny. It's scary. It is all of the above. It's a witness infection. It's about two families um, that were East Coast families that were sent over to the West Coast for witness protection. And they ended up being in the same town. So they want to kill each other pretty much. So they have to find a way to to get along, to make it cohesive. But meanwhile, they've already, you know, killed somebody off on the East Coast, a Morelli family, and they've infected this uh, food truck and sent it over to the West Coast to wipe out these two families. And that's where the zombie, and it was, it, Jim Ojala was our, our special <laughs> effects guy. So he, that even though amazing. we say it's zombies, it's really more of an infection that comes through. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's so disgusting. Uzis. Uzis. Like yes. totally staff or strap. But oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. pretty nice. Gnarly. Yeah. So, and oh there's a God. there's a few kills in there that are like nice it. surprise kills that we haven't seen before on film. Can't beat a so. good surprise kill oh, yeah. for a laugh. Yes, and well, you're like, I mean, ah, and then you're like, ah, 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 yeah. you know. Which they is, used to drop pianos yeah. on people's heads. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we've really taken it to. Yeah, we take it to another level. level. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Lots now of blood. we're going to take a moment uh, and look at your IG because Jilly is very active on the IG. Yes. So go ahead and click over to... I love the IG. I love all you guys. The I can't IG. see everybody online. I, yeah. I want to go on my IG, but yes. I don't know how to do it. Who's well, the IG? We, we're going to get there. Don't. I know. It's just depressing. So yes. how do you get to be Instagram famous? Like, how did you curate... I'm definitely not Instagram famous, that's for sure. But I like IG because it's more pictures. It's a little bit more positive. Um, you know, I... I, I'll go and I'll look at Twitter, but I'm not very active in Twitter mm -hmm. just because it's so heavy with the negativity. Yeah. And I understand that people has a, 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 you know, they have a place that they can vent and they can discuss, but it's just not my jam. So you know? when you think about your brand, mm -hmm. how do you go about uh, deciding what goes on your Instagram and, and what suits your brand? What suits my brand is, is funny and fit. So I feel like, you know, we've had a lot of comics, um, you know, I know a handful of comics that have killed themselves that were friends of mine. Mm. And you get to a certain point in this business where in the comedy world especially, it's like, do I want to go down that route and be unhealthy or do I want to get healthy? And I chose the healthy route. So fitness is my way. Um, I suffer from seizures and I'm off medication because of my dog and because of fitness. Um, and other health issues that I've battled with, fitness has really helped me in that aspect. So. Um, and then to stay positive and to stay funny, it also raises that vibration where it's a healing vibration. So even when I'm like training people, I say, let's find a place of gratitude. You can only think of one thing at one time. Gratitude, if you're thinking of something that makes you feel good, can't think about anything else, let's go. And yeah. that's we work out from that place as opposed to that, I'm gonna work out, I hate my life. And yeah. you know, that kind yeah. of like, yeah, we don't need that here. So. Yeah. And it's really, I've seen people transform from that. So there's a gift of going from getting people drunk and stand up to getting people healthy at fitness. And so the funny and fit is my is my brand. I love, I love that. I love that it too. So yeah, fantastic. that's great. That's I feel it. like there's a I wish we had it in my day. I don't even yeah. have a brand. What's my brand? You have a brand, Jason. <laughs> What's my brand? Well, cute, sexy, fun. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Jewish. Um, <laughs> I just try to be a good person and, and yes, and, and kind. be talented and good. Good kind. you're so already talented. You, what is now your... you just have to be a good person? I think yeah. 
<laughs> you already you got the talent down. Yeah, Baby think... steps, Jamie. All right. <laughs> no, so, let him go, Louise. What is your social media of choice? Like, where do you gravitate towards? I do all of them. I'm trying. I don't know. I'm, Instagram, my age group doesn't go on as much as hers, probably. My people still like Facebook. You know why it is? Because It's because it's too small. And even the little hearts are tiny. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> I just think it's too, we don't want to learn a new thing. Oh, okay. But I'm on There's it. I'm on Instagram, the the Jason Stewart, S-T-U-A-R-T. And I'm also on, I have three Facebook pages, my fan, my regular Facebook page, and then my new one, Jason Stewart, T-O-O, because uh, I hit 5,000. And really? then I have, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I also do Tumblr sometimes. I do Twitter. I do Insta, uh, LinkedIn. I do whatever I, where anybody hits me up, I I react to and I try. I, what I have is I, I didn't. There was a, somebody who did a publicist did a, a, um, a thing on me to see what my, my engagement was, and she says you have incredibly high engagement for somebody in your age group, and oh. I said, oh thanks, because I I return and I talk to everybody all the time and try to, uh, and I also mentor a lot of people. Oh, that's and I've nice. I've been doing that for a long a long time. Mentoring them in anything specific uh, no, or just like skills, anything from their careers to. Uh, being in a 12-step program or having just having a better life. A lot of kids or a lot of LGBTQ kids who uh, come here with these dreams, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people want to be in show business. And I always repeat this story, and it's in my book. Shut up, I'm talking! Um, <laughs> Coming out in Hollywood and making it to the middle is a subtitle. Um, and I available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and on my website. Well, no, Jason, go ahead Publishing. and plug the book if you um, want to. I'm telling you. They can come yeah, to the to Book Soup on Friday. <laughs> um, Friday, Friday. But you I, have to say the book title like that. Shut yeah. up, I'm talking. Shut up, right. I'm talking. Yeah. Shut up, I'm talking. Every what time. other celebrities are coming to your book signing? Oh, yeah. Um, Francis Fisher. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, Sally Kirkland. Sally Kirkland. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tilda Del Toro from uh, Fonzo and night school uh jill was going to come but she has something better to do i have a show <laughs> um for uh, our, for our viewers uh, scott krinsky from chuck yeah uh, scott, oh yeah scott. Wow. he said he would Say come for me and uh, someone else but i can't remember so far yeah and my mom will be there you Aww. know complaining she, you know i said to her on the phone she said i said mom you are going to come she said yeah but i think i'm going to be bored <laughs> <laughs> i said oh dear god this is my mom i think i'm going to be bored what am i going to do i said alex oh alexandra paul from baywatch is hosting the event she's my sister my best friend and yeah, she's yeah. Gonna, did you get oh, the email great. i sent you yes okay so do you understand the story? There's a lot of them. You sent me a no, lot of emails. No, listen to me. Okay. okay. There's a I lot to read and go through. We were Look, in the Jason. car trying to, to, to make sure we knew everything. Okay. I'm, I'm going to just do a little bit of attenuating for you. Shut up. I'm talking. Lay it out for us. Um, Lay it out. I went to the Women's March, the first one, the day after that orange I was there guy. too. Yeah. So I was just walking up to people and saying, where are you from and why are you here? And I made a little movie. And I submitted it to some film festivals and blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I just finally put it up on YouTube like a year later. I should have put it up on YouTube right away. But anyway, somebody on my Facebook was like, why is Alexander Paul in, in your movie? And I, I don't, uh, your bestie, I know, but I did not know who that was. So I said, please explain. And then they, you know how they always give you like the time code of where to look for right. something. Because it's like a 15 minute <laughs> movie. So there, there was a woman, a very beautiful woman that we interviewed. And I guess it turns out it's the twin of your bestie. Oh, and Caroline. out of the random million people that were at that march, her birthday was yesterday. She, but her twin yeah. is in my movie. That is Caroline crazy. Paul, yeah, she's a wonderful writer. She's written a lot what of a books. What a small world, yeah. right? That it's is crazy. crazy. No, not for them. Those two uh -oh. are activists. She has, She was driving an electric world. car, and she lives in uh, Hollywood. I, I live in Hollywood, and she lives in Malibu. And I, she was driving an electric car way before anybody. I never understood how she could get to my house with that extension cord. But <laughs> yeah, I, it was so hard. I was always afraid that she needed an extra. You have to plan ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought so. Anyway, so let's go to my YouTube. It's called Praying With My Feet. And I love that. I've 16 It minutes. really wasn't a march. It was a stand. I could oh. barely move. We oh, got that the, was... We got there. There was no marching. You we see, just it's all there. kind of captured in my film, the well, squish. I can't wait to see that. It's yeah. a very polite squish. We're squished like this, and everyone's like, oh, I'm sorry. Pardon me. Oh, thank you. Oh, and you may go here, and then I'll go there. Everyone just stayed so nice all day, even though we... It, 
we thought we, maybe we'll be trampled. But the neat thing about <laughs> it is... I'll be politely trampled. No, you know, but the neat thing about it is that women were really, really standing up and saying, hey, this is not our president. Oh, absolutely. And this is not what we want. Yeah. And I just so respected that mm-hmm. you know, when people as a group, and I think it means something because it starts to get people a uh, fire into them to, to... There's so many people that don't vote. It's just... I think it should be illegal. I think you should not be able to get a driver's license if you don't vote. I really don't. Not get your tax return, I your don't tax think you money. You should be able to buy eggs. I, well, oh, I, I just think no. it's because well, I, I, don't, I, I will I, say this something. though: when you when you do when you are because this is what some people why they don't want to register to vote is because of the the demanded jury duty. Because I actually had to go because I had done the whole like oh you know hold off hold off hold on they're like mm-hmm. you have to come now. And I showed up and I looked around. I was like, these people I would never want on my jury. They pay you $15 a day. They don't care if you're an independent contractor. They can mm-hmm. care less. No. And and so there was one woman I felt so awful. And again, look, I'm very, very fortunate. I live in this country. I'm not saying anything bad about this country, but I'm saying that system, It should. there should be some kind of change that happens. There was a woman with a baby, an infant baby, and said, I can't afford to get a babysitter. And I, and because they said no kids will be allowed, no babies will be allowed. Oh, that's a great prop. I'm right? going to use that next time. Right? And, and they said, figure no, no, it they out. They said, figure it out. And yeah. she changed and she goes, you know what? You should be happy and honored to be here. The, the judge was ye- yelling at everybody. Yeah. And then when people were like, whoa, you know, like whatever, she goes, you know what these cases are about? These cases are about money. That's all they're about. That's all. And she just went crazy on us and then left. Good. Good. And I went, this is. That's what you should have done. What? Gone crazy. You could have left. Oh, no. Believe me. That'd like, be easy I, for I you. Arrested. That'd be uh, easy for you. But yeah, that's all that I do all the time. Um, but no, I just sat there and I go, look, if there was an incentive, like even $100 a day, $50 a day, the caliber well, of people would be a lot higher. I, yeah. I was, if I might interject something, yeah. I, I was talking to a friend. And uh, I was describing some of the ways that I had gotten out of jury duty over the years. Mm-hmm. I just pretended some like they cre- did come. I did for years. You know, and it's it's really fun and it's improv and it's it's great. You just right. go for it. You feel out the room and and you know where you're at mm-hmm. and you get out. And she really reprimanded me, as the judge did to the courtroom apparently, because she said, "Look, you're an American. You're lucky enough to live in what." I consider to be one of the freest and greatest countries in the world, mm-hmm. you, you know, present time excluded. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it sunk in with me. Mm-hmm. And she said, it's your civic. And she got in my face. And I've been friends with this girlfriend. Well, we she do. Said, it's we, your civic we do. duty. We and, do and, do that. And now I. We don't. We forget. And now I feel compelled. Next time I get that, I'm going to try to make it better. I'm going to try to yeah. do good or be a better citizen by just saying, okay, I'll do it. I got time. I have to do. I have uh, to do what a citizen needs you know. to do right now, which is break for a commercial. Oh, Let's no. do it. We're going to come back, oh, no. and Lori will be the first one to speak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Alex Trebek. Yep. Oh my God. Hey, I'm Zach, and I'm Kevin, and we're the hosts of the Rinkside Podcast. We were annoyed by the lack of hockey coverage on local sports radio, and decided that we were stupid enough to try and provide some ourselves. We have what we call the Rinkside Guarantee. We guarantee that the podcast you're currently listening to is better than ours. We are literally just two halves of one whole idiot trying to fumble through covering the Detroit Red Wings, the National Hockey League, and hockey in general. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter at Ringside Pod, and subscribe to us on all your favorite podcast providers. Every time you listen to our podcast, it brings us one step closer to our ultimate business goal of purchasing the Arizona Coyotes (laughs) and then moving them to Detroit. What? Now, back to your regularly scheduled programming, or just another commercial. We aren't the ones who make those choices. <laughs> I love these two. Yeah. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, that's a mistake. All right, yeah. we're going to... Oh, hold. you guys are busy with Snapchat? How do I, how do I change it? Oh, I don't no, want to be, something I don't want happened. That. Uh-oh, you're learning Instagram uh, now on the clock? Wait, wh- I, sorry, I forgot. We have a jingle what? for it, right? It's uh, teaching old people how to use social media. Shut teaching up. Teaching old people how to use social media. Social media. <laughs> Dot com. Well, right, Lori I, had a thought. This oh, is my oh, first look, time on Instagram oh, live. Oh, exciting. IG, really? I, I think it's stupid. Call it what it is. It's Instagram. Be honest. But it's yeah. not. Oh, I almost but you gotta. But you always got to abbreviate. No, you don't. Yeah. Oh, that's totally bullshit. So, Lori, you bullshit. had a thought? I thought it sounded it like a medical important. procedure You're when I heard up it on IG. <laughs> oh. 
don't like that angle. It's a bad angle. I'm losing. I'm I'm losing control of the show. Do you always hold this during the whole show? You can hold it like in a flattering angle. Sure. How? Because it's good for isometrics. Go ahead. We're gonna play another game. We're playing a game called I love games. How do you feel about dot 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 question mark? Oh. And I'm gonna start. I'm gonna kick it off, Jilly. Hold on. I'm setting. How do you feel about? Okay. How do you feel about Snapchat filters? Or she loves them. I I like to to do them and then send them to my friends, but I don't like to like put them out for everybody to see. I think it should be a private thing. Mm-hmm. But I tell my niece and nephew all the time, like I get so upset at them because I'm like, you are not a dog or a bunny. Like right. stop it. Like right. they, they, it's like they really forget what they look like. Right. And I'm like, you guys do not have cl- flawless skin. Like go use the acne medication. Like seriously, <laughs> I, it's like a false sense of reality now. Like yeah. they're, they live on the phones that they don't so like I always say I'm like my niece and nephew too that I just I love and adore them on text messages because they 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 love me with their emojis and everything and then I see them in person they're like hey I'm like oh, oh my god yeah. they don't know how to interact no, in no. actual actual life I, you know? I, I, is, is I really it because they're, the they're is it because they're not adopting the character that they're in I mean if they've got these things on their face you think that they would, you would get think into they it would, but everything can't is just you, like I mean look they're not gonna have to have Botox or anything when they get older because it's just like just just everybody all the teenagers are like us uh, yo how you doing hi fine uh, fine okay there's no expression Oh, I see. They never yeah. actually pop a real expression. Nope. Like, no, like okay. the Lion King. My cousins are yeah. the same way. My cousins really? are these like gorgeous young Asian girls, and they always put on like the filters that give them makeup and stuff. And yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? You don't need that. You're seven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> FYI, this is my original face. <laughs> wow. All right, Jason, That's... are you ready to play your game? Of course. How I'm do ready. you feel about Facebook fundraising? People who ask for charity money on their birthdays, type of thing. On their birthday. Well, you haven't seen it, Jason? No, no. I guess I haven't paid oh. attention. Yeah. We're asking for a people, donation to a particular fund.org. For, for their birthday? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on uh, Facebook, I have a friend whose brother committed suicide. And so on every year on his birthday, he says, please uh, contribute to the suicide prevention. Well, that's so, different. Oh, that's yeah. Good. yeah. Well, that's, that's different, different. But if it's their birthday, I Hi, feel guilty. I need a new Lexus. I feel guilty <laughs> just wishing them happy birthday because obviously <laughs> I've seen... <laughs> That they want my money, mm-hmm. and I've chosen not mm-hmm. to give them any. Well, Jilly, your thoughts? Well, I it's kind of like I just ignore it. Okay. I just say happy birthday. It's kind of like the homeless person that walks up to you, and they got a cell phone, they got whatever, and they're like, can I have some change? I look them right in the eyes and go, nope. And mm-hmm. it's that kind of same thing. It's just like, no, not going to do it. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always say that I give to homeless people once a day, because that's all I can afford. But in terms of the... Um, uh, GoFundMe and all those campaigns. That's how I did produce my first uh, web series, Mentor, right. which is also on Amazon. Right, so uh, crowdfunding. Inter- so for that, and, and so I do it for art, for people who want to create yeah. the art. Right. And I give, uh, you know, a little bit to all my friends. But and if done it's that for tigers without paws, you're like, I'm sorry, but I don't. I think I, we yeah. just, I love animals too, but it's gone too far. It's crazy. Yeah. The animal also, people. Like, I don't want to see know. an ostrich on a plane. I don't want a dog in a restaurant. I know what? I'm a terrible, I don't want a dog oh, in a I'm restaurant. I'm sorry. I'd mm-hmm. rather in have a restaurant. I'd much rather have dogs than kids in the restaurant. Well, I, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, I mean, well. it's it's two sides of the same coin. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. I, well, I if, they're, if they're well-behaved dogs, I, I really yeah, don't know. how do you judge that? Because hygiene is not a problem. We're walking using... in with our dirty feet anyways, yeah. you know? All right. um, well, we're not walking in barefoot. So, right. How we're, not, we decide, and we're not walking in naked. Yeah. And how do we decide where we give our money? Because right now, our email is full of political candidates yeah. who want oh, our money. Hard. We have someone raising money for GoFundMe. They have a dog, you know, who needs like a you know support wheels or something so how do you <laughs> i don't give i don't give money to political candidates oh not I, at all ever? i don't believe in it oh i do no, because as you I, see my bumper stickers cut to I, the white chalk because yeah. i support them i i just think i'm, a, I'm, I'm against, a collector i'm against the idea of that i think the the country should pay and we should only have three months of this and the country should pay that you know it should all be equal the idea that someone has more money than the other person is not fair Right. It's not but, a fair election. But if they're but taking small way. donations from everyone, like in Montana, mm-hmm. you, each candidate can only get so much money from each person, mm-hmm. which is why you want to get the dark money out of politics. Yes. Yeah. You get, you get oh, the I, corporations I, and, and, and the lobbyists and all that stuff. They just start to it's wipe them out. It's tough because I totally agree with what you're away. saying, but sometimes it's like you have to, in my opinion, you have How to do you know who these people really are? I know. They're not Trump. 
That's who they are. That's why I, I give to all I of them. I agree. Believe me, I'm going to get out and vote, and I'm going to campaign for people and do things and give of my time. And good. My, oh, yeah, I think yeah. so yeah. much. Donating your time is one yeah. of the yeah. 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 I think whatever makes you feel good, yeah. you should do. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then do. when you want to uh, contribute to St. Jude's mm -hmm. or the Muscular Dystrophy but Association, you do that that's on your own. Right. Yeah. You do that because of a compassion that you feel yeah. a need. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes it takes association. To, uh, with with a disease well, to, what I, to yeah. want to give the, like to the it. The AIDS and, walk or the that, AIDS bike ride. I, I know uh -huh. the people that are asking me to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, yeah, I always say, whoever gets me first gets the money. And I give it to somebody every year. For my yeah. birthday this year, I'm going to ask for an organ donation. Because <laughs> I got a new heart and liver about a year and a half ago. Really? And I'm an ambassador for One Legacy. So I go around speaking to people about donorship and stuff and, you know, asking them to drop a kidney in the door on the way out and things like that. You know, I'm not, I'm not awesome. too Sometimes I'm not too heavy do. about it. I'm not too intense about the that's whole it. thing. You need a it just cloth. happens. But so oh, for my birthday, that's what I'm going to ask for on Facebook. Okay. Instead of a donation to an organization, I'm just ask for people to become donors. Well, Jamie, I That's just renewed very, my uh, driver's license. Doesn't and, cost anything. And I made sure, well, this is something we can all do when you renew your driver's license. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you click the box that says you're going to be an organ donor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also, also what in terms of do? other artists, I say, you know, give a, if you think someone's talented, you know your friend or someone's work mm -hmm. that you like, Support other artists. Yeah, oh, yeah for a buy their, me. buy their sure. book, uh, buy watch their special. Right, you know, or yeah. buy it. Get, send their special to someone else if you want to. I mean, send the book as a gift to somebody. You know what I try Help to do? somebody with their web series or a film they're trying to produce. Jason, yeah. when I, I agree, when, Jason. When I Very read good. or enjoy something, I try to go in and give a review because that's extraordinarily helpful. Yeah, yeah yes. definitely. So even if you don't have the money, you know, just your words can be. Im yes. immense support to someone who's being creative. <laughs> I'm at, I'm at, oh, go ahead. I think also it's it's important for people to, you know, sort of save some stuff for themselves. I think in this crowdfunding and, and outsourcing era, we're sort of like kind of, there's a little bit of a guilt of like, come on, you can give a dollar, you can give whatever. And so at times, sometimes I'm like, no, I'm going to, I'm saving that dollar for myself. I need to focus on things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that that like also But if it's somebody yeah. you dig yeah. though, come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, uh, yeah, I want to buy, you know. A go fund me to get a smoothie. Yeah, I need to get an iced tea. I want to buy Chipotle. Yeah. Hey guys, I want lunch today. Hey guys. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hey guys. I, I want to go to the Ivy. All right, this yeah. one is go going to me. Jamie. This is going to Jamie uh -oh. in this round of how do you feel about, because uh -oh. I know that you, that you can relate to this. How do you feel about hospital and or injury selfies? Oh, um, I have never thought about it specifically in those terms, but I can tell you that I think <laughs> I think it um, it can help us. Like Gil Christner just passed away. Did he? He yeah. died. Yeah, oh. and I got to see him. I'm sorry, Gil. In the hospital, but I got to see him, and so it was kind of like for me. Facebook is a postcard. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I can take time to write about things to people that I care about uh, that are my friends. And um, so I, I kind of like it because, and for me, you know, when I, I, actually, you know, I never posted any photographs. You didn't, that's why I'm asking no, you. You I, didn't, you wrote. When I think about it, I wrote. You, you wrote. That's where I wrote my book, The Tin Man Diaries, available on Amazon. And <laughs> please review it. I've read it. It's and, wonderful. Oh, thank you. That, well, please review, review it. it. I would love you to review it. But yes, Jamie, and, you but, were in the hospital anyway, for how long? Th uh, three months. Right. Yeah. And but, I did not, when I came in, say, hey, can I, <laughs> let's take our picture together because I just didn't think it was appropriate. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't I look don't, too good. I, I'm the same way. I don't want to see a picture of someone at their worst. No. I'd rather see a career retrospective. But if it's... If it's <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like. In soft focus. You know, in soft focus. Uh, you look one at of those in memoriam photographs. Right. Good times. You know, where you so look you, really what terrific. What if you do a hospital yeah. one, but it's in a Snapchat filter? Does that, <laughs> like oh. that, yeah. Yeah. Does like that a little can, dog. That's yeah, creepy and yeah. weird. Um, yeah. But no, I, I do believe that if you want to share, I mean, there are wonderful things that you can do to help educate people. And if exactly. it's educational, then absolutely, because I had a major surgery um, and I didn't document it. I actually documented it on my own that I'm actually cutting into a documentary to, to give to hospitals oh, and to wow. give to other to help Good. because I had such a rare Good. case. Good. But I just went and 
kind of talked about what was going on and people were very supportive. It actually really helped me and helped me not feel alone. Oh, and okay. there were people reaching out and like anything I can do or hey, my sister found a lump in her chest too. And and it was just like this this amazing uh, camaraderie and community that that is out there online. And I'm laying there and I can't move. God, yeah, I so feel like you're such able... like a better person than me. I don't want to <laughs> talk to everybody and discuss everything. But everyone's <laughs> different. Everything that's everyone's going different. on. I know. I just everyone's don't want to do it. Yeah. And because well, it was such a rare case, I really felt what it have? was important for me to talk. I had um, about 11 years ago, I had gotten implants and I one of them formed into a big mass. That's what oh, happened yes. to Sally Kirkland. Yeah. And and it, did it explode? No. What happens when they went to extract it, a green liquid, a green yellowish oh, liquid no. came out and it was very scary. I had to go through a bunch of series. So that meant there was important. an infection? Well, it ends up not being an infection. Okay. Bizarre. Oh, um, it was protein that was pushed in into because I'm so healthy, my body was pushing protein into the implant into and then the... created a branch of scar tissue around oh. so it was pushing on it. Oh, goodness. My body was rejecting this. Oh, yes. oh, so wow. yeah. the thing I want to do and help and educate others is saying that, you know, I'm not against plastic surgery if it makes you feel better about yourself, but these are options that we didn't know that this was yeah. back 11 years right, ago. Right, because you didn't have the information and they didn't exactly. have the information. Exactly, they didn't things. know. My mom also, you know, had, had I helped her with her boob. Mm. Her, and she, yeah, they, one of them just exploded. Oh, jeez. Uh, you know, oh, but she didn't even know it it was just leaking for the mm -hmm. longest time and you know they and you know she had to have them taken out and put new ones in and i didn't i didn't do that what's wonderful is that now the surgeons are so advanced that right. they did reconstructive surgery okay. so i am 100 oh, percent all me right. and even though it's not like Bah, 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 bah. I am so healthy and happy, mm -hmm. and and I. But I, it's this idea that all men that like big boobs, and it's not true. It's not true. No, sure. and, no. and I can care less now. I'm older now too. It's like, and I had the pressure of the business, and right. you know, now that I'm older and I'm more confident in who I am, it's kind of like, well, there's push-up bras, there's whatever. If we, really I think it's want like that. shoulder pads. It's like, yeah. well, so like this, <laughs> yeah. some dresses look. Better. That's why I say to different exactly. girlfriends. When there's I say, also Snapchat so, filters. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Some dresses exactly. look so better. With, you know, yeah. but, there, but there is some dresses look better with bigger moves and some dresses yeah. don't so you can sort of change it but yeah. it's about health what it it's really about being exactly. healthy yeah. silly yeah. wabbit all right this Just next round goes to goes to Lori. okay how do you feel about and i do hope you have an opinion and i usually trust you have an opinion on everything you know actually i'm does... kind of very in the middle most of the time i feel like i kind of <laughs> i don't right. really like well, to you, rock well, just make something up what make i mean up. is i hope you know what i'm talking about yes <laughs> how do you feel about face swap apps they will bring down the destruction of society <laughs> <laughs> they will face destroy swap apps horror they have upon that weird they they have that big the thing world. on your face is that what that is it's where you fit you swap somebody's face so like if i wanted to be arnold schwarzenegger i could put arnold schwarzenegger's face oh my, on my god face. Or you can be old yeah. or you can be, be a boy or i could be i want to be brad pitt boy, or you can right. be brad pitt you can be nicholas cage yeah yeah, like there was that whole well, thing I don't want to be Nicholas Cage. Just, he spent too much money no. in his career, and he just messed up stuff. There was too that serious. whole thing that was that was this big thing that was going out uh, last week, I think, or maybe right. it was even yesterday. We're going to talk about this because it is topical. Uh, about that Russian, it is topical. Yeah, I guess. It was, uh, where it made you look older, and right, so, so you put you like did the face app, and it made you look older. And then you, so. you would or see drunk, they did with Nancy what? Pelosi, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, did you see that the one terrible. for Keith Richards? No difference. But did you guys, did you guys, did you guys, did you guys talk a, about that? About we're going to talk about, let me give a little okay. bit of a background. Okay. okay. So according to this article I found in Vox, the panic about FaceApp's old person filter isn't wrong exactly. It's just tinged with xenophobia and devoid of context. Now, I don't agree with everything I'm about to read, and that's why we're going to weigh in. Okay, so... According to this article, it reads, of course, there is a moment in every fad where someone loudly points out that the fad is really bad. And that moment has come for face app this week because of a heated co conversation around the app's terms of service policy. And I would love for Jason to read the terms of service. You grant face app a, a per, per, what is that? perpetual per irrevocable, ir ir irrevocable, non-exclusive, royalty free worldwide fully paid transferable uh, uh, sub licensable license to use reproduce modify adapt publish translate have sex with your friends i don't know <laughs> create derivative works from distribute policy perform and display your user content 
and any name, username, or likeness provided in connection with your user content in all media formats and channels not known or later developed without compensation to you. Let me say something about this. Yeah. Because, and you also get to keep I am your a volunteer mom's at, implants. It, no, <laughs> I was a, I'm a volunteer at the Screen Actors Guild, and I'm on the Low Budget Film Committee, and I'm also the creator and the national co-chair of the LGBTQ Committee, which I'm very proud of. Wow, congratulations. And, and we, so I've yeah. been uh, learning, especially with... Uh, all sorts of things like this. And this exact thing mm -hmm. was passed around at a meeting once, mm -hmm. at the idea that they can take your likeness and, and this kind of thing. Social media for people who are in show business is really, um, a, in a sense, a bad thing. The generation below Jilly's is, uh, has basically given away. Given it up. Our, you know, I mean, the two industries that started, honestly, and without jokes, is uh, music industry first and then the porn industry second because there is no guy I know that wouldn't pay 10 bucks a month to get free porn. And now it's all free and these, inter these industries are not making the money. That if they something's free, you're what's for sale. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, what's tricky about this, Jason, really, is that it's, it's a awful. Russian company. Mm -hmm. FaceApp is a Russian company, and that's what caused everyone to freak out because these types of these types of except for Trump, no. these types of terms and conditions, you'll find them in lots of different apps like Snapchat and and other apps. Facebook. But what was freaking everybody out was that there really isn't a company in Russia that is free from the Russian government. The Russian government can have a piece of whatever. Well, this is made up so, then. Influence, right? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? It's made up. It's not a real. I mean, it's a Russian company, but it's not. It's it's a independent company that people are doing to spread all over. Yeah. So they Face can up. take. Oh, so they can take your stuff and make money off Face you without up. paying anybody, right? FaceApp uh, claims just, that they have no connections to the Russian they, they government. Claim, but I. Where but is I their know office? They're in so Saint Petersburg. Their um, <laughs> research and development yeah. is located in. In Russia, in the Russia, uh -huh. yes, the Russia, but yes. they claim that they have no that there's not a connection. They between. also claim Since that when, Chernobyl is false too. Right. So. Since when can we believe anything that comes out of Russia? <laughs> right. I, I, not that these guys. I'm not. Have I'm not disagreeing with you. Just I'm just pointing us the out. Yeah, I'm pointing out the. So I think that this is an opportunity for everyone to kind of like get clued in, right? I think that's what this is kind of a chance for us to do, and like. I think you guys have been alluding to the, we don't know what any app does and it's just because this one happens to be Russian that everybody's like oh my god pa but like instead of panicking like let's think about what is really happening with our privacy and what um what we're doing when we're using any app and what can be done it's not even our privacy it's the idea that somebody can take something you've done and tried to put it out there. And this is for actors has been going on right. for a while. We've been talking about this at the Guild mm -hmm. for a long time with the union now. We call it a union now. Um, that the idea that something that we have done can be put into something else mm -hmm. and we have, n we, we, you know, our, we will not be paid for that. Like that sampling. Is, it's that, like that sampling. Is, yes, yeah. which I don't believe in either. The idea that, that if you're going to sample someone, you need to pay that person. So. If you need to take somebody's music, you need to pay that person. Mm -hmm. I mean, it certainly should be a sliding scale so people who have a lower budget of things can afford to use certain music and stuff if that artist chooses to do that. But these people are hitting agree, you know, that's the they, thing. They and hit just, agree because they want to use it. Because they want to use it and they're not paying attention. I mean, fortunately I didn't use it, but I do have Alexa and uh, they say everyone, they're listening in. She knows everything. And they have the whole committee. They have this well, huge... There's, there's people, a ton of metadata yeah. that lives in every photo Yeah, and it could be misused by anyone. It's the concept that it could mm -hmm. include the Russian government, since we know how good they are at technology, that's been frightening for everyone. Go ahead, yeah. Lane. Yeah, I I think for me it's like a little bit of faux outrage because like anyone that uses any app, like what you were saying, your information's out there. If you're on the internet, privacy isn't a mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. You already agreed to not have privacy. I agree privacy. with him 100% yeah. because yeah. And I, I, when I was writing my book, when I was writing my book and I was Skyping with my uh, co-writer, Dan Duffy, I told no one I was writing a book. Nobody. Hardly. I mean, one friend. My friend, Alexandra Paul. Um, <laughs> and is the only person I... know her I, twin sister. Yeah, she's well, great. I know. The you don't together. really know her, okay? <laughs> Stop uh, it, Jason. Let it go. Let Tell it them go. both happy birthday okay. for us. So... Uh, it, I told no one, but all of a sudden, all over Facebook and all my social media were things about books. Yeah. Yeah. All on it. Everything. Because I was using Skype. 
Yeah, wow. exactly. They, but and I want to tell you, the amount of uh, masturbation footage they have of me and these porn sites <laughs> yeah. is going to be oh, so man. sad. I'm, I, have, I have an incredible career. In I mean, that it's going to yeah. be a retrospective. They're sending your lubricants. Yeah. <laughs> but at least the they should give but me a deal. F- for me, it just seems like I think it's m- less nefarious than people think. I think right. there's yeah, so much metadata, that. and there's so much that people are using that there's obviously people out there that are stealing your information and trying to get your credit card stuff and hacking stuff but like the amount of sheer data that everyone is given is like it's just a byproduct of the internet well, we're all you know? so very important mm-hmm. do you understand that they really <laughs> want our information just personally yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. i mean it being in russia is like scary but it's also like they they don't need it to do what they did, right? right. Like they already did. I want to know what did. you and Michelle think, will look like I at age 90. <laughs> like they already, I must they, have it. Well, they did they it right already, in front of us. They can I mean, already they didn't even try. Fake. They just did it right in front. <laughs> right, so like, what, that, is a, what is them having your face going to do? Does anyone look at those bot they know, profiles? They look at the, the metadata knows where she is. Mm. It knows when but, it was taken. They already it knows know that. who she's friends with. But well, they you, have access everything, to all your photos regardless, in your phone. No, that's they, can, where, they, that's can't, that's where they can't access. No. All right, I have they, a penis. Well, they say that they <laughs> okay. can't. They can only access the photos that you upload. But uh, I, I just think that this situation kind of points out some of like the flaws um, with social media in general. That like there's, you know, it sort of shows the the mis misinformation, right? The spread of misinformation. The fact that it's hard to have like a real discussion and like learn things without just like freaking out um like a lot of people on my (laughs) facebook were were not like hey let's think about what the implications of this are you know i would like to have a a discussion about this and see where this will take it's like you guys know that like the russians are stealing your faces right and that's like not conducive to any kind of so you're saying we're freaking out about the wrong things we should be freaking out but not about this specifically? I don't think mm-hmm. we should be freaking out. You know out. what? Yeah, I, I don't know about so either. You know I, don't think I'm I think we need to be calm. Uh, Let's address I'm this freaking out about the about. fact that I've downloaded so many freaking apps. I put my face on so many things and not one goddamn <laughs> bot has used my information. <laughs> That's it's like, what, it's, yeah, what do really. I have to do, Russia? <laughs> what do I have to do? Here Come I on. am. Russia. Come and get it. Come, Come and get it. Yeah, That's it. Yeah, I want to be a bot. I'm begging you. I would love to be a bot. I would love to. They're watching right now. Has anybody seen this? This new show called <laughs> Years and Years on HBO. Yeah, I love it. Oh no! Oh, did you watch it till the end? No. The last one was last night. It was no spoilers. spoilers. Well, at the spoiler alert. Okay, at the end, we all it, you can download somebody's uh, everything on them, and it becomes. And when you die, it's downloaded, and you're still, and you're oh, like yeah. Alexa. And I think mm. so, if that happens, I'm so relieved because I was afraid that I have to go to hell because I'm gay. <laughs> and by the Christians, no. you know, they're so no, aggressive. No, 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 no. So it's like your mother's voice can just live on your desk and like bark yeah. at you forever. Oh. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna, have We're gonna wear that. Or they yeah. can at least it's, talk to you. What totally are you doing? My, totally minority report. <laughs> Shut up, I'm talking. <laughs> Shut up, I'm talking. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, who's ready for Facebook feed time? I know Ooh, I am. Yes. Facebook feed yeah, time yeah. comes to us from feed Sarah Skilling. Time. And she, oh, I love her. Yes, she cryptically writes, front row, there is no way they won't see my poster. So I'm like, all right, where is she? Who is she obsessing about? And then oh, you look it? at the, uh, they click on the Instinct picture. Or Backstreet it Boys? looks like it's the Backstreet Boys because that looks like Nick yeah. out front. I thought that was the, I and thought then, that was the Brady Bunch. or something. Back. Yeah. Oh, so back. that's all right. all right. So I, we were now we're obsessed to know what was on her poster. Why did she need to be in the front row? And so we did some time machining on her profile, and we found mystery solved. And See? yes. See, look at this. You just dig it. No privacy. Go. Yes, Sarah, you are. <laughs> you are sexual. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm. If I was her dad, I would say, get that crap off. It's a beautiful, so, beautifully it written nice. sign. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, you know what I think is, is fun about the internet is that you can continue to obsess about your teen crush. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to yeah. be like, oh well, I'm 28 now, so it's like, no, there are other people who go on the new kids cruise. I wish I was I 28. Go. Yeah, no, I'm. I'm just saying, when you don't really outgrow <laughs> feeling because you, you, David Cassidy's was dead. That, your that team was crush? My, David oh, Cassidy. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh my God. Mine was J.C. Shazay. So, and I think it explains why J. I'm a C. lesbian Shazay. now. <laughs> <laughs> who is yours? Yeah, who is beautiful. your team? Crush? Yeah, he is a beautiful who man. Who is yours? Um, my team crush. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I think it was River Phoenix. <gasps> yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. that's a good I love him too. He's cute. Jamie. That's oh, a good one. Jamie? Me? Oh, me? You want oh, mine? I'm, I'm dating myself now. Okay. Of course, I've dated myself for Meryl years. Meryl Streep, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anne Margaret. Anne Margaret. Oh, yeah. I would go. I want to go. Bye, I would go for Anne Margaret. I would. I, I, I want to. In carnal knowledge. I want to be married. Yeah. yeah. Marry me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. That's She's good. a great actress. Just oh yeah. A fabulous actress. Yeah. It's everyone not kind her of knows. She's my, so gorgeous. My teen crush. Everyone kind of knows was the Cow Sills, and I grew up and made a movie about them. The what? That's right. The Cow Sills right there on the wall. Yeah. The family yeah. band. Oh. Family band. Oh. And I then in high school, my my teen crush was the Letterman. And the Letterman had oh, not David. like oh, 50 Letterman. albums All that three. you could do a deep dive. And it was like, I was trying to describe the Letterman to Dina. And I said, imagine if Michael Buble were a trio <laughs> singing in three-part triplets, harmony. Triplets. Mm. I imagine Jeez. that every day of my life. <laughs> yeah. Right? So you can see. And I, I got to go to New York and stalk them at a hotel. And I got to, yeah, I got to meet them. And I have two letters from Tony Butella in my treasure box. He actually wrote back to me when I was like 15. Oh my God, I love that you have a treasure box. Of course. So awesome. uh, when so Tony great. writes to you, you yeah. have to create it. It's buried yeah. in the backyard. <laughs> so yeah. So, Next to the bunny. Not that anybody asked me, but my teen crush was Jonathan Brandis. You're right. Oh, we didn't ask you. That's oh. so tragic. <laughs> I interviewed no, him. So, and he so was you a, did? Yeah. And I interviewed River Phoenix. <laughs> did I interviewed you really? everyone's. <laughs> Wait, wow. is this your dad? <laughs> yes. And how is it that both I've of your teeth... Got, it's not my dad. <laughs> no. Oh, no, because you look like... You have a lesbian daughter, right? Yes. Yeah, oh, Haley Kiyoko. Yeah. And I thought... Yeah. You, no, you, the Ka- eyes. Haley Kiyoko is... Hold on, hold on, hold on. The eyes. <laughs> no, no, maybe. No, Haley Kiyoko is half Asian. Should we do some DNA? No, this okay. gal, not your real daughter. So, Jamie, yeah. your daughter is someone's teen crush, like right now. Like, she's a lot, lot of people. She's a lot of people. A lot of teen people's, crush. Yeah. I think a lot of people. She's are. a singer, right? Haley Kyoko. Yeah. yeah. Songwriter, and an actress. singer, She was actress. on CSI Cyber. Quickly Google her. For a couple of years. Yeah, oh, no. Haley Law. I, was in, I did a film with a girl named Haley Law, but she is uh, not Asian. She's half black. So this would be different. Yeah. Well, she's half Asian. Not from my side of the family, from my wife's. That's yeah. what I figured. Yeah, that's where she gets the Asian from. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I just wanted to clarify. No, it's the Asian just, skips a generation. Do we have her? <laughs> <That's> got Haley? <laughs> <laughs> so Haley did, Haley did something wonderful last week, Jamie, that we didn't get to mention on the show. Let's mention it today. Did she do something wonderful oh, last week? Beautiful. She, she was um, in LA Times. She was on. She had a full page uh, interview in the LA Times uh, arts. She and just book released section. a new single. Oh, that. Because she just released her new single. I wish. I wish. And it's up. It's close to three million now already. I think. Wow. Yeah. I'm up. It just goes Kyoko in her news. first video. Mm-hmm. Girls like girls like boys do, mm-hmm. which is the song she came out with, is now up to like 120 million. It's crazy. That's it's just awesome. nuts. It's nuts. Woo. But she but she directs her own music videos mm-hmm. and uh, like she's a filmmaker. She, yeah. And she doesn't realize it but she is a filmmaker cuz she's directed these she and all and all of these well these production houses are taking meetings with her because they want her to direct she's a film. Tri- yes. Triple threat. So that's you that's know that's amazing. where she comes in and she calls herself a queer woman of color. And we call and her cuz she won Jesus. she won the a, a VMA <laughs> award last year. Oh my God! So she's going to present a, a, a Moon Man to to the next rising star this year. That will be is, fun that's for amazing. Her. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I, I am proud. I am proud that she's changing lives. She's making girls. Could I open young, for her? Young girls. <laughs> I think so. Uh, you know, I would like to. Probably, like, yeah. That's a good idea. I, I would love, love that. that. I mean, and also, I was I won the best actor at the Silicon Beach Film Festival. Stop it! What? Oh yeah, Jason, good for you. No, it was it was in a bar. It was for my short, but <laughs> <laughs> it, that's they present. I wasn't even there because I just thought it was so sad. <laughs> 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 it was, you know, because I've been. Dude. This is from his act. Yes. No, no, it isn't. It's a, it's, this is, this is all real. It's but you truth. can put it on the post. Put it in your act. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jason, where can we see you? Please click on jasonstewart.com's uh, uh, hashtag shows. Uh, what, do, please plug what we need to know uh, about book you. Book Soup. Book Soup, I, yeah. We'll be having my first ever book signing at Book Soup August With my best 2nd. friend's twin, Alexandra Paul. Don't <laughs> yes. say I don't know her. I don't know what else is on there. Go ahead. Um, I don't remember. Um, oh, I'm actually going to be at Sit and Spin, and I will be reading a Ooh, section from my book, oh, yeah. a different story. Maggie Rose thing. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. with Maggie and Jim uh, Valet's yeah, thing, and yeah. I'm going to be doing uh, The Last Train to Heterosexuality Stops Here. Now, are you uh-huh. doing that uh, this month? Yeah, I'm doing it on uh, August, August 15th. 15th there you go. Yes. Okay. And then on the 17th, I'm doing a show in uh, Ontario uh, for this guy, Andy Kern. And then what's the next thing? Oh, I'm, I'm in the... Uh, 
Oh, the, the Venture uh, Harbor. Har- Harbor Comedy Ooh, Club. I love that Great club. room. I went to do their comedy festival. Great yeah. room. It's a nice. headliner show, so if you don't like me, there'll be other people you'll like. If you don't like him, there's a great view out the window. Yes, yes. there is. And there's a, <laughs> and see, that's and, that's the poster they have on, and there's a guy right there, and he's on that ship, and I know him because I've been on that stage so much, so I feel like we have a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me and your friend's twin sister. Yeah, and what else do I have? What else is going on? <laughs> <laughs> One night you're going to watch. Oh, this is oh. really good. If you live in Palm Springs, they're doing a career retrospective of me at this place called oh. The Quad. Yeah, so that's really cool. Oh, that'll be fun. Go ahead. What else is Oh, there? and I'm going to be Oh, there. this is fun for Terry Jason. Yeah. Where else am I going? I yeah, forgot. Right. That's got, it. Uh, there's more. Show more. Oh, there's more. There's more. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm having a book signing. at. In, oh, in, in Palm, Palm Springs. Yeah, that's like oh, my second wow. home. Just fabulous. Steve yeah. uh, Bluestein just moved to Palm Springs. Yes, he did. Yeah. I keep hearing that from people. You so should send him a basket. So, I, you know, I don't know Steve. When I used to know him at the comedy oh. store, I was so he was he was a little uh, snippy with me. No, 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 he's just shy. He's just shy. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. he scared he's, me. So I don't yeah. remember. I, I don't know him well. One of the funniest people. Oh, I, that's yeah. very now, did, uh, did, Were you out? Were you out when you met? No, him? not at all. We were both in the closet, so we oh, stood. Okay. You know, us. We would sort of guys like us would completely. You know. Stay away from each other, like oh, magnet, really? like magnets. Oh Is that yeah, what it felt yeah. Like? You don't want guilt by association. Like that, oh my goodness! Uh-huh. Wow, yeah, it was a terrible Crazy. time. Honestly, that is terrible. I always felt like I was going to be caught. So when do you when, uh, really? can imagine when that? Did you decide I can't do this anymore? I'm coming out. Uh, Thursday. It happened Thursday. Uh-huh. And just no, last like Thursday. Just, it started just, in um, uh, 91. I started experimenting. I did a gay cruise. I did a big AIDS benefit. And oh, that's more than the improv, a young man. <laughs> <laughs> that's heavy usage. Yes, and I yeah. and I realized it was so interestingly cool to be able to talk about what was happening in my life because when I opened for you, mm-hmm. I was in the closet totally, yeah. and I only talked about things until a certain time. It was almost like I was emotionally uh, stunted. stunted. I remember the night yeah. you came up to me in Igby's. Uh-huh. And told me that you'd come out. I'm coming you said, out. You said, "I am so happy." I said, "You I'm, know, I'm hey, be how doing you doing, Jason?" You know, and, and it I was just you like was, I, you uh, just started to glow. You said, "I, I am the happiest I've been in years," and I just want you to know that I'm coming out. But is I was, that still a thing now? Because it's oh, so acceptable, yeah. do you have to like say I'm coming out, or is no, it just we no, don't fall in love? No, that's a very good point. No, but you Joey. are treated. Yeah. You are treated know. differently. I think. As yeah. A, as a, as a, there's a glass ceiling. Because I know. I'm, so. I mean, this is full. Dis- well, now not in disclosure anymore. Everyone's going to know. But I, I'm dating a girl Mm -hmm. and i also i'm dating a guy and you know and i feel like do they know about each other yeah they all know about you i mean i'm more like i like her better like so it's just like going out to dinner with the guy or whatever but sorry sorry, yeah okay but it's like we're trying to find that out but i don't i honestly it doesn't mean the same anywhere and bisexual people are, especially for women, are treated yeah. almost like, oh, hey, cool. Yeah, like especially I feel if like pretty. if someone asked me that, they're like, are you going to come out? And I was like, coming out? What are you talking about? Like, I just said, no, I just like her. She's like an amazing person. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even look at gender. I don't look at color. Well, what will it's, happen now is yeah. that you, you, even though you're a bisexual person and have a history, people will now say, oh, well, Jilly's a lesbian now. Because if you have well, a relationship with her, you will be, even though that you're bisexual, I have several bisexual uh, friends. See, I haven't, I can't wrap my head around it still. That's why I was asking. Uh-huh. People, yeah. I think people are getting like, more broad. Like even me, I, when I was first dealing with my sexual, I'm 33. Mm-hmm. And so even when I was first dealing- Do we dealing, have to say our age? We're not doing it. <laughs> no, no, we don't have to do that. No, no, no. You're out of here. You have age. to say the age. I'll we'll we'll both walk. She's we'll gone. Walk, yeah, just like that. I mean, we'll be out of this You came in the same car, didn't you? Yeah, we're together. It's an agreement. When I was do it when i was still it was like bisexual was still kind of seen as like not a thing like you were like it was like pick a team uh, yeah it was like uh, pick a okay. team you're, you're annoying and I, everyone and <laughs> and i was that way too i was very much like i remember one time and i i still thought this woman told me she was bisex, bisexual and i was like look i'm not gonna talk to you because i don't want to date you now and i have enough friends so i was like i'm gonna go <laughs> and so i feel like because it was just like at that time i was like oh you, bisexual means you're a straight girl but you're just experimenting well because oh. i was bisexual when i came out and told my family that's what I said and I really was bisexual because I had had a girlfriend for five years and I was that that was my process and in a way I practice bisexuality it's just not really who I am mm-hmm. and I think that as people get older 
you know, in your life, you realize that it's like all on a spectrum. Yes, yeah. and you yeah. and you fall in love, and, you, and, and that's the per, that's who you become. Yeah, mm -hmm. I you're mean, a, you're like, in, a, in, a, in a straight relationship, or you're in like, a lesbian relationship. Yeah, but it doesn't mean you're still not bisexual. Right. Yeah, you, you, but, but but just because you're you know I'm with a guy doesn't mean I'm not going to look at other guys. Right. Yeah, it's the same thing. Well, I mean, that's probably a lot, that's why they call it a girl crush or whatever. If you yeah. can be happily married and still have a girl crush on Angelina Jolie or whatever. Yeah. That's yeah. why it has a cute little name. Or what about yeah. a bromance? I but think, it is. Yeah. But there is yeah. sexuality attached to everything. I see, like, <laughs> Anne Margaret as a kid to me was just, I was so sexually attracted to her. But maybe more her hair in that dress. Yeah, Holly, you, you, you just want. No, I don't want to wear it. Like watching, yeah. I never wanted to be. A, I never wanted to be trans. There's Macaulay like Culkin. More. Macaulay Culkin for me. I was always very much. He like, almost looks like a little girl. Yeah, so that, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. Justin Bieber was mm, so totally, sexually confusing. There were like Tumblr pages that were called <laughs> lesbians who look like Justin Bieber. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I think that it. actually... I think it won't matter after a while. But it does matter in our business to people. I think bisexuality. Is a little easier for I women. think it's slowly not really mattering. I, it's think, like, it's I think so too. It's like I just think. like I like all for women. I like I like the, mm, like I do you agree. like this? So for well, men, I think it's still tough. I think it's still. I think okay. for yeah. men yeah. that are, men, that are still... I've been openly gay for twenty six years. Just now. Just because for so long they use that against each other when they're when they're doing their dominance dance, you know, and so it's hard for that not to I'll matter give, in male culture. I'll give you an example in the uh -huh. comedy world, and you tell me, Jamie, if okay. this is true to you. There's it's a boys club, and it's and if you don't do comedy like a guy does comedy and his thing and talk about his stuff, they run it. Yeah. And if you're a gay guy and somebody, and I've been sexually harassed by a lot of straight men, most almost 90%, 95% of the sexual harassment that's happened to me in my career has Audience been by- members? No, comedians. Comedians. Wow. Club owners. I'm shocked. Yeah. Mm. No, it's, it's, it's part of the, and I thought that's part of the gig. And then a couple of years ago, I started hearing what women would say about it, and, and especially people who's your boss and people who could help you. Mm -hmm. And it, then if you start to talk back and, and think of yourself as an equal, you, you most yeah. of the time you lose a job. And there's one particular place that I'm no longer working because wow. I spoke up. And they're, they don't like it. You have to keep your place, stay in your lane. So there's straight mm. guys still run the roost in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And in terms of playing straight people, and that's what I do mostly now, because there are no gay roles for men over 50. They yeah. just aren't. There just aren't. And when they do, Richard E. Grant gets an Oscar nomination <laughs> and he gets to play it. And he was brilliant. So, but, but still, you know, you'd like to have that opportunity. And this is something that I've just come to. And I've, I've been talking a lot about it in my book tour is uh, the idea that I went to New York for Pride. And in New York at Pride, the two biggest headliners were Madonna and Whoopi Goldberg, both heterosexual women mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so as gay maybe. men they? maybe they this is, they? Who they this is who they <laughs> maybe this is who, both yeah. of Good them point, have had several yeah. husbands Good gaydar. but this is who they say they are you have to believe people you can't just put your yeah you can't it's not fair to do can that. i with my pencil well, what do you please? think about yes. uh, taylor is, swift ho, what, uh, well she let me, before you go to that i'm gonna okay. say this is my forgive me but no this is my thing is as a gay man i no longer want to stand behind the skirts of a straight woman speaking for me or getting my job. Wow. Yeah. And I've been said, I okay. said that, and I'll say okay. it publicly. This is probably the first time. I, it was the RSVP cruise I had heard that I didn't work on in the Atlantis because I said things like that. I didn't want to be, you know, uh, my, my first comedy CD was called Gay Comedy Without a Dress because there was a certain um, uh, connection to drag performers where there wasn't the same to openly gay men who mm -hmm. were... Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I love my drag queen queens. I mean, some of them are brilliant. I love uh, my first chapter in my book is all about Barbara Streisand. I mean, it's not like I haven't supported um, all my gay icons, but I think it's time. It's 50 years now. I think it's yeah. our turn mm -hmm. to have that same kind of um, support Ownership. by, yeah. by gay men. You wouldn't yeah. see Barbara Streisand hosting the BET Awards. No, <laughs> I, mean, I would no. love You to. wouldn't see yeah, uh, would Barry awesome. Manilow. You know, Barry Manilow is not going to be on the the Olivia Lesbian cruise. Yeah. You know, you're not going to have. Well, that's you, wrong. You know, Taylor yeah. Swift be the be the be that's the, the wrong, big him. big you know singer for the next Latin event. You know, yeah. and well, speaking now, of her video. Yeah. What do you honestly, think of her video? Well, mm -hmm. it looked like a video that was done 20 years ago. All every stereotype. Type from oh, all. I was talking about her headlining uh, Stonewall. That's she a, was one of them too, right? Yeah, yeah. she headlined Stonewall. Billy Stone Porter Wall. was there, so we have to give them for that. And so were uh, one or two other gay. My I daughter believe. was there. Oh, your daughter. She had a. Uh, she her was, name wasn't first. She was on the W. 
Uh, right, but her name wasn't it. first, and her name wasn't lifted up. Right, and it wasn't the same size. Right, and in any and Jill, but, but you when, know that that's any okay, billing that's and who you are and where you go, I think straight yeah. people, yeah. straight women specifically in the gay community, the best thing they can do for us is step to the side mm-hmm. and present us. And not and and hmm. and support us in the same way that we have supported them. Yeah, and I but love I think, Madonna. Like, Madonna's done so much for the gay community. I though. think they feel yeah, but that, not for that, any gay that's... performer. There's not who's opening for her. Who's become a big star? Who is somebody who's out in front? Who she's pushed out in front? I don't think anybody opens for no. her. Mm-mm. I think she yeah. just does it. Well, yeah. not for Cher doesn't do it. Cher has right. all these people open for her. Right. But, but for, so for, for Madonna and Cher. Kathy Griffin, I'll who I say, absolutely adore. And Kathy Griffin, it's adore. been. Kathy never has anybody They open understand for her. Yeah. that that's been their role. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to stop doing it because that's who they are. Right. They've I been think so, that's an excuse. This is 2019. I don't, know if it's an, it, I this don't is think it's an excuse. I think it's just that's well. muscle memory. It's like I support my gay friends. And so. Those are my gays. I don't like anybody. If I say, if you said, those are my black. Blacks, those are my Asians. Those so you are... find that offensive? Oh, very much so. And but but I know they're not doing it in a negative way. I know they're doing it because it's an outdated thing. I yes, think. very it's a, much. Okay. It's an outdated reference. Yeah. I think that we got to hold everybody up. I well, I have a husband. Like what's that's not gu- outdated. What, what's a husband? My favorite gay is my my gay husband, and okay. he he a is. Gusman. It's like we, we he's like my husband, but we don't. He has his boyfriends. And I have my th- life, but we've been like that for like 10 years. We both have our dogs. I have the, the male. She, he has the female. He lives not in my house, you know, and it's a beautiful relationship. I, guess I understand that, but I'm talking about in terms of, of people being as successful in the same way that we hold these people up. And we have some people now like your daughter or Billy Porter who are really on the edge, Matt Bomer, who are on the edge of becoming major, major uh, successes in their careers and, and moving to that next level where they can sell tickets and a studio film is going to get, and there's, you know, where they can play a straight person and something that's not going to be a big deal. That, rep- yeah. defense, that representation defense. is so important. I think so. I've got to defend Taylor Swift, though. I'm not saying she's bad or anything. She, no, I know you're not. I think she's just she I know she you're not, does but, a lot of but good. She's come late she to the party. She does a know? lot of good. Yeah. And she has been a particular strong influence on yeah. my daughter but, and it has really helped her with her career because she really cares. And yeah. she cares about... I'm sure about, she does. And, 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 and it's going to take... Not, let me just yeah, finish. Her public it's going to take time. Yeah. Of course it it's is. It's just going to take time. And I know you're impatient. Well, what? Because I'm 106 th- years old. But everybody's on your side. <laughs> everybody's on your side. Yeah, I bought a light bulb the other day that's guaranteed to last for 22 years. So my goal is to outlive that. But oh, yeah, you're yeah. wrong. Everybody isn't on your side. And that's okay, too. That's okay. But, everybody doesn't have to be on your side. Oh, not everybody's on your side you know what no. i mean that's okay too but, not but to be more people are yeah oh, and, of course and but it, if i said that I think to you and i hate to, i hate to be combative but if i said no, that please. to you as a straight man yeah just wait a little longer for for whatever's going to happen mm-hmm. you know wait you, you, that's that's a, i don't know how i feel because that's an irrational situation because as a, a white straight man i've been nothing but privileged Right. All right. But so I, that's, you, you, you know, it's I can't, a hard thing I can't, to, it's a hard I thing can't to react to an irrational premise. Like I, that. I so much agree with um, what Jason is saying about how we can't like keep depending on white, straight, able bodied people to bring, you know, the lives and careers of to hold them up. Yeah. Of more yes. marginalized people like into into the spotlight. Like I there was like this thing I saw the other day where it was like. These two straight guys, like a BuzzFeed thing, these two straight guys held hands, like you won't believe what happened. And like these four- <laughs> They um, had sex. God, well, that's BuzzFeed These for like you. couple of women <laughs> wore like hijabs, like in public, like wait till you find out. Yeah. And it's like, they there's there's people, there's gay men and there's women, Muslim women who wear hijabs, like we can talk to them. We don't yeah. have to wait for like privileged people to put on like their costume or their act. And be it's like, a weird time now because people are asking for their space, right? Yeah. And, it's, and they're asked to be, be you're asking, asking to be, to be treated an, as an individual. individual. What's I mean, I'll never like, get that because like I'm a, too old now. But you, you will see people. I want the next group of people to be able to have that and to be held up and not have to spend that the amount of time. You know, I during my success, I was so scared, so scared all the time of being fired, that. and I was fired. I can give you the names, and some of the, them are in the book. Please, but um, I, you know the names and the numbers. And I was fired for being gay as a comic mm. quite a bit over the years, mm. or just reprimanded for not, you know, 
for, for so, speaking yeah, you know, up. You talk about <clears throat> being gay, and I under I understand where you're coming from because as a as a female comedian, and I'm sure Louise, you feel felt that too. That's why I think I get along so much with gay people is because there is a suppression that is there. And now what's happening is it's a very PC movement that's happening, and it's hard as a comedian because you go into places and some people are like colleges I won't even do anymore. Oh, you, can't. you know, yeah. it's just like because you're. Oh, I will if anybody wants to. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but it's it's people get offended so. Oh, I got in trouble Easily. in colleges all the yeah. time. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, so there's, so I think it's a, it's how your perspective is. If you look at it and you go, is it going to stifle me? Then it will stifle you. It's whatever you believe. If you believe that it's going to create contrast uh, in order to that's too expand. Easy. It's not too easy. It's too actually easy. hard. It's too to easy. I'll tell you why. So well, let me, let me okay, just Because she's talking yeah. about health yes, right now. I'm talking about mm-hmm. everything in life in general too is, yes. is that without contrast there is no you cannot expand so with that contrast if something happens and you're like what the hell is that that's actually an opportunity for you to expand to actually do things to make a difference Mm -hmm. but if you sit there and you're just going to complain about it then that's you're creating that more of that but i'm not sitting there complaining no 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 but i'm just i'm sorry i'm a little confused could you give an example as to what you mean i'm I'm sorry i just i'm a little confused as what you're saying i think it's speaking up so as far as like let's say i'll take an example as a female comedian okay so when i first started there weren't a lot of female comedians you know you were especially very, one that was pretty yeah you were very stereotyped and i remember you were treated yes. a certain way because you were pretty and people people would treat her because we, we had the same manager that's how we met it we would do showcases together and people would treat her a certain way because she wasn't doing the kind of comedy that the boys were doing you were doing a lot of impressions at the time mm-hmm. and it was a different kind of a show mm-hmm. it didn't mean it wasn't as funny it just was a different kind of funny yeah. Yeah. and there was a prejudice against her for that yeah. but it also got I her bet. on that tv yeah. There so, you go. Yeah. so there, there's, but but it, but it takes its toll on you, and you have to find a way. You know, I, I'm all about process yeah. more than just going. Okay, I can turn around because I used to do that all the time, and now as I'm getting older, I'm going. God, I didn't take any process. I just turned and said, "That's what I say." In the clubs, I thought that you just give the guy back the same jab that he gave you, and that was it, and didn't realize the amount of. Uh, um, Power dynamic. Yeah, power game dynamic. Playing, you have to game, do. And, and how much it affected me as a human being in terms of my voice as a person. Right, as a man. I just mm-hmm. stifled it. And I think it. that one wow. of the things wow. that wow. happens wow. with celebrities who try to, you know, lift up their gay brothers and sisters is uh, in women, there's a nurturing instinct that we don't know when to, the bird has left the nest. We think we have to keep following behind and making sure he can fly. But you're a grown man and you're saying, I d- share, please, you know, step aside. I got this. And she's not quite sure that you do. So that's, I think, what's going on. Well, I think stand we, up, stand mm-hmm. up, share, bring that person with you. And Cher does have always an opening. She, Cindy Lauper, you know, when her career wasn't, she brought her everywhere. I remember seeing her also, she had a big, another group was before of, of women. She always had women before her and she was real supportive. Some of them have done that and some people have not. I think we've got to hold each other up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I general. think so. And that's I think what I learned. That, it, I think that's the essence I, of, and I understand what you're, I think, I, I, I think I'm trying to understand what you're saying. It's complicated. Because it's hard yeah. because I didn't have the life experience that you right. had. So it's like, it's hard for you to understand what it's like to get a heart transplant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it, it's just, uh, it, it is a process. It's time. I don't know whether any of us have enough time, but I think we have to just keep setting the wheels in motion and keep moving along. And as I say, support each other. And listen, and put your ego to the side listen. too. As long as it's not hurting anyone. If I'm somebody's sure. telling you, like for example, like you were saying, yeah. you're telling people this is how I feel, and these people are being like, "Well, what do you think? Of, how do you think I feel that no. you're telling well, me this?" This is when I was doing all the press for Birth of a Nation three years ago. I would be on press lines, and the, the, they would say to me, "Well, what do you feel about this film?" It's about black abolitionist Nat Turner. And I said, well, it doesn't really matter what I feel. I said, what I do is I take off my shoes as a white person, put on the shoes of my black brothers and sisters, and just shut up and listen. Right. And sometimes mm-hmm. that's what you have to do is just shut up and listen. Yeah. And people don't get that. They all want to solve it or mm-hmm. find a way for you to go through it in a positive way. Mm-hmm. Or, or, you know, and sometimes you have to have a little bit of a process. And that's where I skipped. I didn't do that a lot. I just didn't. Okay. And uh, well, now you can savor the experience. Yeah. Or you just, know, if or, you're learning to do that. Yeah. Now. Or just learn how to go. Okay, I felt like that. What I felt. And getting back to what you're saying with contrast, you're saying so you're a female comedian, and then so you, you combated that. So in, in instead of just going, oh, forget it, you know, I'm just going to quit. You know, what I did was go, okay, 
I'll play your game. You can talk about, and it was hard because I'd go home and cry myself. You changed your act completely. Yeah, she became much harder. I became tougher. I became yeah. I I went back to old school watching Carlin, watching the where it's like every fifteen seconds there's a joke, and then I hit it back and I came out hard. And I'll say till even to this day. You know, walk into the room and they're still like, oh, we need a girl on the lineup. Hey, Jilly, come on. You know, and it's like, you sit and you just go, oh, here. it's still there. Well, here's a girl. Yeah. Here's, yeah. A, here's a, a woman comedian. But I go, you know what? I know it's it's the game. Do I want to play it? Yes, I do. I love it. Because you go out and kill yeah. it. Yeah. And you I go, go out and kill it. All right, we're going to have to wrap it up. Yeah. We've gone way long and I want to thank guys. everyone for being yeah. with No, no, no. Oh, so no. much apologies. fun. So I want to thank fun. you. Wonderful. Thank you to our guests, Jason Stewart and Jill Michelle Melian. Thank you, guys. Yes. And thank, cool. you. thank you to our panel, Jamie Ellicroft and Lori Roggenkamp. Our producer is Dina Friedman. Our tech team is Lane McFadden and Thomas Hubble. And Francesco Damando. Our sound mixer is John Maddox. Our webmaster is Bill Filippiak. I am Louise Blanker. And we will see you next week. Be safe. Be well. Be kind. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, Sickle.